Good morning, my dear friends. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm in my spiritual center and I'm sharing with you my daily spiritual practice I call Morning Magic. I pulled out the Ghost and Spirit Tarot and that's by Lisa Hunt. And this is the back of the card. And today I pulled the Two of Swords. Now, the Two of Swords, the image is the Ghost of Banquo from Shakespeare's Macbeth. I'll be reading according to the image, not according to the meaning of the card. And for those of you who might remember, if you studied Macbeth, Banquo was Macbeth's kind of best friend, I guess. And, you know, they went to war together and they were really great friends. And on the way home from war, Macbeth and Banquo stumbled upon the three witches who gave them a prophecy that Banquo would become, uh, Macbeth would become king and that one of Banquo's sons would become the king after Macbeth. So Macbeth's heir would not become the king. And Macbeth became obsessed with this idea and so did his wife, Lady Macbeth, who encouraged him <laughs> to do all of these things. Not all her fault because he did them. But he, he became obsessed and he lost, um, lost track of reality. He ended up killing King Duncan and claiming the throne. And then he had Banquo and his son assassinated because he didn't want Banquo's son to claim the throne because he killed the king to get the throne. He thought for sure Banquo's son, Fleance, would do the same. So he tried to eliminate that threat. Fleance did get away and he eventually came back and he claimed the throne because there was war, etc., etc. But Macbeth lost touch of, of reality because he was obsessing too much about this prophecy. Now, a prophecy doesn't mean necessarily, and I know the dis I know the um, definition of prophecy, but if it makes me think of card readers and people who read cards and look for answers in cards. You know, I, I belonged to this um, YouTube channel where the person was doing live streams a lot. And there was always this one lady who came on to the live streams. She was always the first in the chat. I need a card badly. I need a card badly. And a card would be pulled for her advice would be given to her according to the card and according to the reader's, you know, intuition, premonition, ideas, things like that. And this woman would take it as verbatim truth. And you can't do that with anything, with an omen, with a prophecy, with advice, with you, you pick a card and, or you use your pendulum and you say, am I going to win the lottery? Yes. Well, what are the chances? You know, yeah, I'm going to win the lottery. I don't have to work anymore. I'm winning that lottery. You know, that's an extreme example. Or, you know, um, am I going to get this job? No. Oh, well, then I'm not even going to try anymore. All of these things, these um, these psychic messages that you get, they're there for as a tool for you. They're not there for you to obsess about and make sure it happens at any cost, like Macbeth did. It became his ruin. It's just for you to think about it. Like, for example, if you ask a question and your cards or the card reader says, gives you an answer, like you say, am, am, I, going to get, am I going to get this job? I really want this job. Am I going to get this job? And all the signs point to, no, you're not going to get this job. And you give up and you don't even go to the interview. Well, things can change in between. Maybe there's a reason why you won't get the job today. Maybe your resume isn't up to par. Maybe you're too anxious to go to the interview and you need to relax. Maybe you need to work on your confidence. Maybe you don't have very good references. You know, all these things in between that you can look at it, use it as a tool to improve and to, to help your life. 
maybe it's just a case of you made a mistake on your resume. Look over every reason why you won't get that job. And things can change depending on the action that you take in between. So don't lose touch of reality when you're getting messages from the cards or messages from psychics or pendulums or anything like that. Use it as a tool for improvement. I always say that I don't predict anything when it comes to the tarot or oracles or, or any kind of divination. I don't predict anything. I use these for myself as a tool for self-help and self-improvement, self-development, and to help me see things maybe more clearly or open up my perspective for things that I wasn't able to see before. And that's how I treat divination. I know that some people um, do believe in fortune telling and prophecies and premonitions and that's okay for them. But the message that I'm getting from this card today is maybe don't take it all that seriously like it's absolute truth. Use it as a tool for improvement and to see where maybe you could improve something in your life to actually get that job. Or if you're asking a question about a relationship, is my marriage going to end? Well, yeah, it looks like it. You pull the angel answer. I have an angel answers oracle. And you ask, is my marriage going to end? And you get the yes card. Well, it's going to end. I'm calling my divorce lawyer right now. It's not that black and white. Life is gray. There's no black and white. Seriously. You have to think of, okay, at this moment right now, the angels told me that my marriage is going to end. Do I want it to end? If you want it to end, that's another thing. But if you don't want it to end, maybe it's time for you to look and see if there's something that you're doing that's causing, you know, this problem where your marriage is going to end. Like I said, use it as a tool. That's just my opinion, of course, <laughs> and what I get from this card here. So I hope this resonated with someone out there, and I hope that helped anyone who needed to hear it. And I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for being here. Bye.